Hey, shalom everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati. I'm from London, from the UK. I'm here to speak tomorrow and then uh, join my family for a long-awaited um, vacation. Um, I'm going to wait a few seconds and then uh, go over a few things with you that I think uh, are very, very important. Okay? So um, let's wait a few seconds. And again, I'm in London. I just arrived. Um, I'm going to be speaking tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. at Calvary Chapel at Westminster. Right over there, Westminster, as you can see. And <clears throat> uh, it's going to be very good. If you're here in London, you may want to join us tomorrow evening. So... Um, just um, I'll wait for you guys a few seconds and then we'll go over four things, okay? Four things. So, all right, good. So, again, shalom everyone. This is Amir Tsalfati. I'm in London. I just arrived. My family will join me tomorrow. And uh, right after I'm done with church tomorrow evening, we will officially begin our family vacation, which is very, very needed. Um, so, um, now, <clears throat> let me talk about three, four things. Okay, first of all, as you know, breaking dawn is over, ceasefire is in effect. Hamas never joined. I guess Hamas realized that uh, the rules have changed, and now direct assassination of leaders are on the table. So they chose not to take part of it. Another thing that uh, you may want to know is that the Islamic Jihad is the is the arm of Iran in Gaza, and Hamas is Sunni. Islamic Jihad is spreading Shia, and that's one of the reasons there's a a competition between Hamas and Islamic Jihad and. For Hamas, there's no point for them to go to war or stuff that the Islamic Jihad was about to do. Now, I want to say two things about what happened in Gaza, and then we're going to talk about China. Then we're going to talk about Russia. And then we're also going to talk about what happened in Florida yesterday. Okay. So first of all, in Gaza, as you know, and I... I made it very clear that um, Israel knew that there's going to be an anti-tank missile that is about to be launched. The, 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 the small group, the terror cell, was deployed already. We knew when, we knew where, and we knew with what they're going to shoot. So that's, this is... A good thing that Israel did not wait for them to do that. And that's what the terrorists were used to. They were used to have Israel operate only in response to what they do, not a preemptive strike. Remember, the last time Israel really acted preemptively and had a good, a great success was in June um, of 1967 when uh, we striked. Egypt and Syria and uh, on the ground. And of course, within six days, we quadrupled our territory, which is known as the Six Days War. Now, Islamic Jihad is defeated. They're going to lick their wounds. Their top um, command is gone. But I'm, a very, I'm very concerned that the IDF, as well as the Israeli government, are too quickly running to take all the credit and to put all the badges on themselves. I want to remind all of you that 1,100 rockets were fired at Israel. Not a single Israeli died. Not a single Israeli was badly wounded. Show me one place in the world where 1,100 rockets hit 
populated area and no one dies. This is supernatural. Yes, we have Iron Dome, but Iron Dome only intercepted 300 and something rockets. Other rockets fell on, uh, you know, on open field, which is <laughs> godly thing. And those that did fall on buildings, did it was miraculously uh, an amazing outcome because the family was in the bomb shelter and the house was destroyed by the bomb shelter stayed standing. So if you take God out of the equation here, you're making a big mistake. And this is why, you know, in the Ezekiel war, it will be so clear that our enemies are so strong and they are far, far more superior than what we have, that it will not just take a supernatural uh, victory by God, but it will take supernatural act um, of, of, of supernatural phenomena. Okay, it's going to be stuff that is falling from the sky. It's going to be amazing earthquake and stuff like that. It's not going to be just Israeli F-16s. I just, it's important to me that we never take the glory from God. God showed up in a, an amazing, amazing way during this operation. And we should not, uh, you know, keep his part in the dark. Now, um, the ceasefire is still intact. Israel continues to arrest terrorists in Judea and Samaria. In fact, this morning... Um, three terrorists were killed. Um, unfortunately, they managed to kill a canine dog of the Israeli military. But uh, it, it's a dog that uh, his, his name is Zili, and he, he, he actually was nine years in service and he saved many lives. And I, I, it's hard for me to hear about those things because those terrorists don't even... They don't even worth a dog's life. That's for sure. So that's what happened. You know, the, uh, the current prime minister is going to try to use as much as he can this victory to show himself as a strong leader right before the elections. Okay, That's one thing. Now comes the second thing. Okay, watch this. Russia, as of yesterday, announced that it is no longer allowing U.S. inspectors to supervise its nuclear arsenal. Why? Because there, the treaty that was signed in 1984 that gives Russians the access to supervise America and then give American access to supervise Russia and, and basically to keep each other accountable for not, you know, not doing anything that out of the ordinary, all of that, folks, is now coming to a stop, and there will be no control over the use of Russia in with nuclear weapon. The Russians said that yesterday. If you don't know all of these things, follow me on Telegram. I'm tired of saying that, but I, I, I will not stop saying that because this is where I go into details. What this treaty was all about, when it was signed, what did Russia say? All of these things are there. You may want to connect with me there and, and read. So that's as far as the nuclear arsenal of Russia. Okay. So this is an important thing. Let's move now to China. Okay. China announced that the day Nancy Pelosi will leave Taiwan, China will start a four days long military exercise in seven different zones surrounding the island of Taiwan, blocking all access of anyone to and out of the island. And remember, when I gave my update from Dubai about this, I said, I doubt if they will stop after four days. And sure enough, it's now two days past the time they were supposed to stop, and they are now extending it. And from what I hear, some sources in the West are concerned that 
China might take advantage of these military exercises and actually invade and take over Taiwan within 48 hours, because what they have there is enough for them to do that. And before America can ever respond, that this island can be in the hands of China. So just so you know, the Taiwanese are now paying the price for Nancy Pelosi's, Pelosi's visit, a visit that I'm not sure how it could help anyone, um, but it certainly is giving the Chinese all the excuse they needed uh, to do what they do right now. Okay? Now, let's move to the fourth thing that I wanted to share with you today. Yesterday, the FBI raided President Trump's um, estate in uh, Palm Beach, and that's Mar-a-Lago. And um, they came in, they confiscated documents from his personal safe, as well as from the rest of the house. They claim, at least according to CNN, that uh, they came to investigate President Trump's taking classified um, um, documents from the White House to his own private place. Look, um, and I've, I've said that many, many times. People ask me, why do you care so much about Trump? I don't care so much about Trump. I care much about America. What we see right now in America is the deep state is being operated by the elements that do not want Trump to run again. And this is it. Now, whether he's going to win or lose, that's a different story. But never before a, pre a former president received such treatment as we see right now. Now, make no mistake, I do believe that in both cases of Trump and Netanyahu, uh, they will have a very hard time getting back to power. Once the liberal progressive left um, grabbed the power, in my eyes illegally, but grabbed the power, they will not let it go. And I, I said that before, I'm saying that again, they're not going to let that one go that easily. Now, people write me and say, don't support Trump, he's an evil man, he's this, he's that. Look, I don't support any person I support ideology and ideas and platforms. I'm not even an American, so I don't even go to vote. But I can tell you, Jesus is the only perfect leader. And he will only reign during the millennial kingdom here on earth. Until then, the choice is not between great and perfect or between great and greater. The choice is between a sinner and an evil sinner. Uh, the, the choice is between the least of all evils. The choice is between lesser evil. That's what we deal with. This is a fallen world. This is a very, very sinful world. This is a very um, um, uh, uh, a world that, 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 that is a, a perverted one. And uh, I, I don't expect people who run it to be perfect, but I expect those that are, know the Word of God to at least not support platforms that are against the Word of God. Now, persons, uh, people are all, you know, we're all fallen. But what is it that we promote? What ideology is it that we promote? That's something that we need to ask ourselves. What is it that we go to vote for? I'm not talking about what, who. I'm talking about the what. And that's something that we need to ask ourselves. And so what, instead of asking if Trump is perfect or not, or if uh, DeSantis is perfect or not, or if this one is perfect or not, ask yourself, what is the other side? Are they better than this one? Are they promoting something better than this one? And that's where the answer is, okay? See, so remember, nobody is promoting anyone here. We just want to be workers of righteousness in a fallen world. That's all. 
Now, what happened in America yesterday is a very dark chapter in history of, of America to, to, to raid into a former president's house. And this is not the first time they try to put something on him and he's always, always, always being <clears throat> exonerated. Um, but again, this is what we have today. That's what we have to deal with today. I believe it's going to be the same with Netanyahu. I don't think that the deep state will allow him to get back to power. I want to encourage you to go back to Telegram <clears throat> and I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep updating you about situation in Israel, situation in the Middle East, situation, of course, in the rest of the world. And as always, I want to tie it to the Bible and to the plan of God, which is very, very open and very, very clear in his word. And that's what we do. And that's the most impo important thing. Okay. So again, pray for us uh, tomorrow. I'm teaching here in Calvary Chapel, Westminster at 7.30 p.m. And then uh, with my family, we're going on vacation for a good 12, uh, a good, good two weeks um, here in the British Isles. And then get back home to much work. Thank you. God bless you and share this. And again, follow me on Telegram. Telegram is the most important source of information today. Facebook is not good and the rest are just the same. Telegram is where I can say everything I want without being shadow, bound, shadow banned or restricted. One word, Behold Israel channel. One word. And this is where you can find me with almost 300,000 subscribers. All right. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from London. Bye-bye.